You said you started? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, welcome back to another uh, episode of the Powerful Fitness Podcast. You already know who it is, Willie Henderson III, a.k.a. The Rain Drop, The Rain Drizzle, The Rain Man. And uh, this is episode number two. We got on my teammate, my brother, Gavin Bland. And, man, this is going to be a good one. We're going to talk about upcoming fights and, you know, how our opponents don't stand a chance and just, you know, stuff like that. So, um, Gavin Bland is a professional MMA fighter. Uh, he's been a pro now for about, what, six months to a year or something like that. Um, he was an amateur for about five years. Uh, he has an extensive wrestling background, and we're going to get into all that stuff right now. So, uh, Bro, let's go ahead and start off from the top. Let's, you know, because a lot of people watching this might not know you. So let's talk about, you know, where you started in martial arts, you know, with your wrestling and stuff as a child. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll go a little deeper this time, man. Um, I come from a fighting family, you know. Uh, I had an uncle that used to box when I was real young. You know, he started to teach me how to box, and that's crazy because he died in 96. I was born in 90. So I've really been around combat sports for a long time. Took karate when I was 12. Wound up getting kicked out because I kicked somebody in the face at school. Been wrestling since I was 14. I got into organized boxing when I was 16. That didn't last too long. But, um, I mean, you know, beyond that, football and things like that. But as far as combat sports, man, this has been a – Oh, pull it – talk a little closer to my – yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a lifetime, a lifetime journey, man. I've uh, – huh. you know, I uh, – I witnessed the murder back in uh, 2011, 2011, and, you know, after that, you know, I, I found myself in prayer, like, look, God, I don't want to fight again until I know how to fight, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, I ran into a teammate, uh, well, a, a friend at work, He was, I was shadow boxing outside of a, a building that we were building, and he was like, you know how to box? I'm like, yeah. So we slap boxed, and I touched him up, and he was like, hey, man, you should come to this gym. So I went to the gym, went there about two weeks. Um Things was that the gladiators? No, no, no. This was, was before uh, then. Okay. Yeah, it was a little gym in advance, man. Uh, things didn't work out for real, you know. Um, just based off of knowledge and where I was, you know, I had not too long came from uh, college wrestling. You know, I was a you know, collegiate national qualifier. And, you know, my skills just look different, you know, when you're dealing with certain people. And I, I don't know, he might have been intimidated or what, but wind up leaving, going uh, to Sykes and uh, trained with Tim Wells for about seven months, left there. Went to um, the Gladiators. Started there for about two months. Met my coach, the coach that I had, one of the coaches that I have now, my uh, main MMA coach. I met him the first day I walked into the gym, and he literally was just watching me while I was training with the Gladiators. And one day was just like, "Hey, won't you come in?" Like right before like my second fight, man, changed my life. You right. know, um, everything that I prayed for truly uh, came to pass. And uh, from then, man, you talk about twenty. Hold on, let's, let's pause that. All right, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, hopefully, we got fixed a little better. The The microphones are kind of making a little buzzing sound, and um, we're not the most technologically advanced uh, minds in this room as far as uh, microphones and uh, computer stuff. So we're trying to get it figured out. If it's a little buzzing, hey, just, you know what I'm saying, tune that out. So um, let's get back to it. So we were talking about uh, your transition from uh, – all right, so, uh, yeah, so we were talking about um, your transition from, I guess, the so the first place you started training was, in, you said in advance? In advance. I trained okay. there for about two, three weeks. Then I went to Sykeston, trained there for about seven months. Where did you train in Sykeston? Oh, with, with, with oh, uh, Timmy boy. Tim, yeah, Tim Wills, bro. Um, then came uh, to the Gladiators. You know, Jim was watching. You know, eventually I trained with him, bro. Changed my life, man. Um, got me back to the roots, bro. Like, one thing about MMA – Everybody likes to come in with their forte, right? And they always say that styles make fights. But how can you ever be the best if you don't have a knowledge of all the styles? Right. You know, it's kind of like when we were talking uh, lately, we've been talking about like transitions. You won't truly know how to defend a wrestler until you learn how to wrestle. You know, everybody worries about takedown defense. But until you get in a position to where you're actually trying to take somebody down, then you'll see how somebody else is defending that takedown. Right. And then you get taught the same defense, and now you understand the offense and the defense of it. You want to dissect these things, man. You got to get down to the root of it. 
You know, and that's been the beautiful part of my journey is the fact that we did get to get back to the root of everything. You know, um, yeah, I came in with a wrestling background, but I'm not just a wrestler anymore. You know, I know way more than that, you know, and I'm grateful for that. That's been the biggest difference in my journey. And then beyond that, you know, I wrestled at the highest level. So the lights didn't matter. You know, it was the anticipation of the fight, you know, you know, the, the, the nerves and the anxiety and things like that. And then you get to remember that last jujitsu tournament I did. Uh, which one? Uh, the Fiji. You know, the one where I took Fuji. third, <laughs> Fuji, Fiji. Fuji. Hey, Fiji I like water. Fiji water. But um, um, my composure, composure changed everything, bro. Was That wasn't the one where you went against uh, the coach. It was, that was a different one. Oh, so that was the last one I did. I'm talking about the I one before that. I think that was your last one. Yeah, yeah, that was my last. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But composure, you know, beyond knowing as much as you can, what you want to do, you know, if you really want to compete with the best in the world, you want to know as much as you can, you know, but don't call yourself this and don't call yourself that. Don't give yourself a title. It's like if I just met Willie and said, oh, Willie's great at karate, let him be my teammate, then that's all you would have ever been, you know, and if you came in, okay, I'm great at Taekwondo, I'm never going to let this go. Nobody ever said you had to let it go, but you want to add to your arsenal. You really do. Right, but in a, in a way, you really do have to let go of what you know to to really, you know, dive deep into the next art you want to learn because it's just, you know, it's completely different, you know. A lot, you have to break things down and then add them together. You know, when, you, when you're baking a cake, the ingredients don't come together, you know what I'm saying, they come separate, yeah. and then you mix them together crazy because uh, i know on one of the other podcasts bro i talked about a tree bro the first thing you gotta do is plant a seed mm-hmm. you know and, and you can add your water bro mm-hmm. you in 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 martial arts different things water you you know whenever your soil's uh starting to get bad you know you gotta toss it up and put in new soil right so every time you get in a rut in one art jump to another one bro come back to it right you, know? you, you definitely want to stay fresh and this game is like dude in life, you don't want to just do the same thing every single day. No. You know, you got to mix it up, and, you know, and that'll make you, like they say, distance makes the heart grow fonder. So if you, you know, put distance from yourself and, and certain things just for, even if it's a couple hours, even if it's just for a day, like, mm-hmm. like okay, instead of instead of going and getting on a treadmill or, or instead of going and hitting the bag, how about I go rollerblade today? Mm-hmm. Like, I do that often. When I know I I do it for fun, but I also do it for exercises the day that I'm like, okay, I need a good cardio push. I'm going to go skate because I'm getting tired of just running. I'm getting tired of just swimming. I'm getting tired of just, you know, hitting the pads and all that stuff. Sometimes you got to really step away from from what you're doing every day and do something completely different. Yeah. Even though it's, it's, you know, it's you're still on in the same, like, uh, on the same course, you mm-hmm. know, getting ready for a fight or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about your next fight. Um. A. You know, you've been pro for what a, a year now. Oh, well, about uh, six months. Si- I, I took my pro debut. Uh, was that November twelfth? And then I took my second fight March twelfth. So now it's April. So we're looking at yeah, like six months. Okay. So your, his fight is um, his fight is what day is this? May twenty first. May twenty first. Yeah. Pull it up so they can see that and uh. So that's it. What, um, that where's it at? Right there. Look at that guy right there, man. It's going to be in Springfield. Uh, I don't even know how to say the name of the venue, bro. You you know I'm a fighter, bro. I just want to fight, you know. I, I'm a, I'm an artist, bro. I, I came in a fighter, but, you know, I look at this game like totally different. You know, it's, it's a, no different than another day in the gym, bro. I just train as if it's my last fight ever. So what do you know about your opponent? Um, I know he comes from uh, – well, right now, for sure, he's training at uh, Glory. You know, he's one of uh, James Krause's students. I've actually went to Glory. Man, love James Krause, bro. Those guys are full of knowledge, man. And uh, my opponent, and honestly, he's probably had seven or eight pro fights, you know. And I, that doesn't mean. What's his record? I think he's like three and four. He's actually coming off four losses. You know, I think we talked about this once before. I'm not the guy you want to come and fight coming off of losses, you know. Because if you think you're going to approach me, like, oh, this is war, you got something else. This is not about to be what you think it is, man. Bro, I'm ready for whatever. Right. However you approach you it, bro. You want to be coming at us with, with the upward momentum, at least, if anything, not oh, yeah. a downward momentum. And don't don't come in like, 
like that headstrong, bro. Be confident. Don't be headstrong like, oh, I got to do this. I got, bro, I don't have to do anything. I do this because I love it. I take these fights over and over again because I love it. I noticed that promoters even noticed that, bro. And then they try to play games with you. Don't play no games with me, bro. Just because I love the fight don't mean I'm dumb, you know. And just because you're coming off a loss doesn't mean that you're about to come in and knock me out, bro. Like, this is not that. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to pick him apart. And I'm going to do him in. Like, bro, of course. He's got some tight techniques, bro. So you watch his fights? Of course, bro. I'm not. It, it, it's not that I need to just sit here and study him. But at the same time, you know, you got to look at the art of war, bro. They send in spies, bro. A video is nothing but a spy. I need to know a little something. Ain't nothing wrong with being a little. This is part of it. Yeah. Planning, but and then also being able to adapt and change your plan while you're in the fight. Because you can't just go into a fight thinking, this is how I'm going to beat him. Because if you get in there and it don't work, you have to be able to immediately change. see that and change. You know, that's why, yeah, we make a couple of little plans on what we probably can land on them easily by their, you know, their subtle tales and what they, you know, their mistakes that they make in most of their fights. Mm -hmm. But if that mistake is not, like, if they constantly duck their head in all their fights, they duck their head, throwing overhands, whatever, and then you come and fight them and he never ducks his head. You know what I'm saying? Keeps his chin tucked, his eyes forward, and he's throwing straight down the pipe. Well, now we're going to adjust. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of people just, they just can't do that. You know, they don't. They well, don't have it up here. They don't have it in their mind to be able to do anything different than what they know. Well, what's crazy is just what really, really fascinates me about fighting is how you can spend so much time training all these different strategies and techniques, and then that there's a disconnection from the gym. From the dojo to the cage, you see these guys that are really good in the gym, and then it's, when they fight, they just you're just like, what happened? Yeah, we've had a couple fights like that where we didn't perform well, but I mean, I honestly believe I, I'm I'm beyond that. Yeah, I, I mean, I look not at my that last I don't fight, make bro. mistakes, but I'm beyond getting in there and not truly showing people how good I am. You know, like it's like I've had too many fights to get in there and not. Not do my thing, not you know, have fun and and just show exactly what I've been doing every day in the dojo. You now know? don't mistake that people. What he's saying is that he's gonna go in there and do what he knows. That doesn't mean he's gonna get out of his character. Understand that. You know, I'm gonna keep it simple until you beat me at that simplicity. You know? Like I'm gonna show you who I am. I'm gonna show you who I am. I, I mean, Willie, you know I've been watching you, bro. I've been watching you for years, bro. Before we became teammates, I remember watching your fights, bro. Yeah. So I know where your mind has gone and what wisdom and knowledge and understanding has done in your life since then. You've changed as a man, which has also changed you as a martial artist. How you feel about fighting hasn't changed, you know? Take some wins, take some losses, cool. But how you look at yourself and how you look at how you're going to perform has come completely changed completely changed you come in with a level of confidence i know a lot of these people hear it on the internet and they think oh willie's just as arrogant you know but they don't really know willie you know that sells fights bro so right. call it what you want but i know my friend to be humble like he's a very humble dude he's come from very humble beginnings and climbed and climbed took losses against guys he didn't have to take no different than me in my first pro fight fought a guy i can't discredit the fact that he won or the fact that you know he might be a good fighter but he beat me. He beat me. But did I show who I was? Bro, nerves, man. There's a lot of things that these fighters deal with that they don't want to talk about. Like, bro, my composure in my last fight was awesome. I don't care at all what the commentators had to say about it. Oh, Blandy, you know, he shouldn't have did this. He shouldn't have did that. Like, bro, I took this man down. I wore him down. Next round, I come out ready to, you know, re ready to go ahead and show him what I got. And then you hear the commentator saying, oh, I'm glad Bland stopped because he would have blew his load. Bro, I train twice a day, five days a week, minimum. Like, are you serious? Worried about me? Don't, don't worry about my cardio, bro. Don't, don't stress about that. I'm the fighter. I put in the work, you know. And, like, it, back to my opponent, man. I know he comes from a decent school, bro. He's coming off some losses. I can't deny the fact that his amateur record was pretty good, you know. And he does come from a good gym. Throws his punches straight down the pipe, bro. He's got some kicks on him. But he's not me. You know, he's he's not, bro. He, he You can try this guillotine, bro, all you want. You know, I know he finishes a lot of his fights on the ground, and a lot of people, if he makes it out of the first round, he loses. Mm. I'm sorry. I spent most of my amateur career going three rounds just to make sure that I was ready for war. Yeah. So if he's not ready for war, 
then that's on him. And he can call himself a warrior. I watch one of the, I'm a warrior. Okay, be a warrior. Be a warrior. But I'm a martial artist, bro, and a warrior. I'm, I'm a lot more than what you think I am. A lot of these guys literally are fighters. They're not martial artists. No. They don't look at, they don't look at, at competition the way we look at it. Not at all. You know, not that there's not a lot that that are that do have our mindset. There's a lot of guys that have our mindset, and guess what? Those are the ones that become champions, make it to the top, and are constantly getting better, constantly growing. Yes, like, sir. You see so many guys where from one fight to the next, it, they could fight, and then three months later look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Another three months look exactly the same. It's like, where's their improvement? No. Uh -uh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, why are they not tightening tighten up their techniques? Why are they not adding more techniques? Like, you just see the same stuff. I'm going to tell y'all a secret real quick on this podcast. Oh, shit. You look at me and Willie's uh, careers, right? And they look at all your wins over the years. They look at the fact that, bro, I've had 24 fights in five years, five and a half, six years. We've only had, it was only three teammates and one coach. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. We didn't travel the world. You know what I'm saying? Looking for the best, bro. God provided us what we needed, bro, and we've been here ever since then, been loyal to each other, been loyal to our teams, and every addition to this team, bro, we've just been grateful for everything that happens from where we train to who teaches us and what's taught, bro. We're blessed by it, bro. You know, we know how to, whether you look at yourself as gold or copper, I know how to take copper and take the gold out of it. I know how to take gold and not take the, the ego that comes from it, you know? Like, bro, we were blessed, man. We are truly blessed. Was cra and it's crazy because literally, outside, all right, I got you and I got Ron. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other MMA teammates. No. When it comes to MMA, I got you and Ron. Look at the weight And difference. a lot of stuff I can't <laughs> even do with Ron because on, on the ground, like, he'll squash me like a bug just by leaning against me, you know? Yeah. Which is, is just crazy. But, like, why is it a... Uh, I heard that in my ear, in my thing. Me too. I think that's uh, that's Facebook. So look and make sure that just close out whatever. Yeah, just close that out. It won't do that. Um, but yeah, I only got you and Ron as MMA teammates. You know, I train over at Carpe Momentum Jiu Jitsu, so I got some Jiu Jitsu teammates there. But you know, they're not my MMA teammates, mm -hmm. and I honestly don't get to go there that much as much because I'm doing so much, you know, training with you and then private lessons. You know, mm -hmm. so. It, I don't. I only get to go there like, honestly, if I'm lucky, like once, once or twice a week max, yeah. you know. And then sometimes I have weeks where I, I can't even go there because I'm doing so much outside of there. Yeah. And then you know how you know it's just, yeah, so just is hard on the body too. So it is. you know, and then also it's like I have to ask myself like, okay, do my MMA training, no gi or. You know, I can't I can't sacrifice our MMA classes to go to jiu-jitsu, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've just been trying to find time to go there as well and get rounds in with those guys. But, like, you and Ron, my only MMA teammates. Yeah. I don't even have anybody my size. Like, I don't get to go against 145ers when I train. Like, yeah. I, I got to go against you. Yeah. Like, and they wonder why you do so good. Like, bro, you know, I've been waiting on that day that you realize, you know, that, that I kind of look at it. I won't find a person who can – control the distance like some of my teammates. I can't find a person who can possibly box in the pocket with me like some of my teammates. Yeah, some of the best in the world may be, but, you know, I have a great team right here with me. You know, like, you can look down on my team because it's small and you come from a big gym, but, bro, you got another thing coming if you step in the cage with any of us. Any of us, bro. We bring the energy. We bring in the action. I'm not yep. shying from the fight, bro. My first pro fight, bro, I was, you know, I was in my head, you know. I ain't going to deny that, bro. I wasn't myself, man. I, I, I didn't. Oh, I knew. Yeah, I, I seen didn't, it. Didn't strike the way I could have, you know. I didn't transition with my takedowns, you know. But, I mean, I even look at my last fight. That one shot I took, bro, that transition was ugly. But I tell you, I've been working on my hands, you know. I've been working. I tell you, I've been boxing since I was 16. I'm still working on my hands. Like, you know, bro. I heard this one of, I can't remember who it was, but he was a really good uh, wrestler. Like, he's mm -hmm. been wrestling his whole life. And he was talking about how leading up to a fight, he didn't wrestle for a couple months because he was working on striking. And it's like, dude, when you're so good at something, you would think like taking a month or two off from it, like mm -hmm. kind of putting it on the back burner, like it's still right there fresh. But no. like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's how they say you don't use it, you lose it. Well, it's not like you lost it, but it's like, it's just a little rusty. It's like you got to 
blow the dust off of you it. Got you know what I'm saying? Now, like, you know? And yeah, exactly. So, you know, that, that plays a factor, which is why it's important as MMA fighters to really be truly training everything, yep. you know, leading up to your fight or in the camp, as they call it. Mixing it up, transitions, you know? Yeah. Think about it. Mixed martial arts, a transition. I'm going from one thing to another, like, constantly, bro. So what do you see, you know, um, in the next, like, year or two as far as, you know, your MMA career? Like, what do you – where do you, where would you like to see yourself going in the next, you know, one, two, three years and, you know, things like that? Like, how many fights would you like to have? What promotions would you like to fight for? You know, is the UFC your goal or is, you know, just wherever you can get paid the most your goal? Um, you know, this is a conversation that we've always seemed to have. Like, as far as our team, what is your goal? My goal was never to be in the UFC, was never to be in Bellator. I always used to say that I just wanted to be able to compete with the best in the world. Probably a year ago, I had a, uh, Ron told me, he said, hey, bro, if you don't want to be a champion somewhere in this game, you know, if you don't want to be the best in the world, then you should stop. Changed my whole perspective on things, bro. I do. I want to be in the best, be the best in the world. So no matter, I don't know where I'm going to go. You know, that's up to God, bro. Like, I, I really don't. You know, I come from here. I got a pretty big fan base. Um, I just want to take the steps necessary to get to that highest level. Where do I see myself fighting? Only God knows, bro. But am I going to keep fighting the best people that I can fight until I get to where I, you know, wherever it is, you know, whatever pinnacle it is that he has for me, that's what I'm going to do. So you're not really planning? Um, I, I'm planning to fight. You know, I'm preparing to fight whoever, whenever, and whatever opportunity comes to me. See, the difference is when you're made for something, things come your way. No different than this journey for me, you know, and no different than the journey for you. I'm not chasing anybody. I am the asset. That's how I, I have no choice but to look at myself that way. I'm not trying to be overconfident or anything, but I am a person. I only have one life, you know, so if fans want to watch me, then I am the asset. You know, I'm not going to chase a promotion because, oh, they can get my name out of there. If they can get your name out there, you're chasing publicity. You're chasing money. You're chasing clout. I'm not a clout chaser. I'm a fighter. I'm chasing the, the time. Well, not really chasing the time. I'm taking the time, and I'm chasing my dream. There's a vision that's set before me to be the best in the world. I don't know where it's going to come. I don't know how it's going to come, but... I'm going to be here for it. I'm going to keep training daily until I get there, you know, but I'm not about to go, you know, oh, man, I just really, really, really want to get to UFC because a lot of these guys go do that, and then they get screwed when they get there, you know. This place, this the promotion makes all the money, and you make nothing, but you're just bringing them more and more publicity. Why not go get your own, you know? Why not get your own? Like, I can fight anywhere in the world and make a lot of money. I don't have to just run to the UFC. A lot of those guys make their money really off the sponsors and things that they do outside of it. Right. You know? So that's how I look at it. Look at Floyd, bro. Signed a contract with Showtime, bro. Bought himself out of uh, the contract. Created a brand. Boom. Took off, bro. Like, he's not owned by anybody. I'm not trying to chase a promotion that really wants to own me. I would love to fight in the UFC. I would love it. No disrespect at all. But I feel like I'm somebody. You know, I am somebody. Right. And if they want me to fight, bro, they're going to have to come find me. So you, me. I mean, me personally, I'm trying to get to the UFC because I just love that that's the it's the biggest platform. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to get to the UFC. It's not for the money because, you know, you can make just as much money at 1FC, mm -hmm. Bellator, if you truly have, you know, good sponsors. But UFC is just that that platform, that, yeah. that top platform for MMA fighters. That's why I see myself going to UFC, the, you know. The pinnacle that I'm chasing, bro, is not a pinnacle in which people have created. It's, it's a pinnacle in, in my mind, in my life, you know. I've been, I've been in combat sports my entire life. So to be, to be the best in the world, that's what I'm chasing, you know. It, I, Platform, what platform, bro? Is the best fighter there? I go there, you know. There you go. I mean, that's how I look at it. Like, their platform only brings you influence, only brings you clout, only brings you publicity. Like, I look at it the way they look at it. They want what they want. I want what I want. You know. Right. So, hey, whatever. If, if y'all want to do business with me, 
let's do business. Let's right. let's make some money, bro, and and win some fights. That's how I look at it. I, I'm a fighter, you know. I'm an artist, bro. I put this time in. Of course, I want to get to the top, you know. But if it's Bellator, I'll go. You know, if it's UFC, I'll go. You know, if it's One FC, I'll go. You know, but my terms are gonna be met too, bro. Like <laughs> I'm out here, a whole licensed general contractor, bro. I'm working. And also, I think that UFC is like the cleanest, um, has the cleanest fighters. Mm-hmm. And me personally. I don't want to be fighting a bunch of juiced up, you know what I'm saying, uh, muscle heads, because if if I'm not doing steroids, neither can you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, I don't want to fight people on steroids because I'm not doing steroids. You, you know see that a lot in the UFC, though. True, but not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. They getting popped off quick. Of course, guys still find a way to cheat, of course, but... At least it's at least it's you know something that uh, they have to hide and be careful with and probably in, in the long run are going to get caught. Yeah. But in other places like one FC, it's like, you know, they don't care. Do whatever you want. No. You know, I, I don't really like that. Yeah, you're right about that, bro. I, really I, I mean, like I would that. hate to be you know cheated like that too. You know, I mean, but I mean it's a part of the game and you just got to be smart enough to understand. But at the it. same time, you know. I, Shit, the way we the way we train to fight, you know, doesn't we're matter putting what you lights want. out. So yeah. you know, what I'm saying you have all the energy in the world, but if I hit that chinny chin chin the right way, I mean you're gonna be sleep either hey, way. So that straw house coming down, you know, it is what it is. Yes, but sir. Yeah, bro, I, I'm really excited uh, to go back to MMA soon. Like I yeah. got these, you know, this one coming up May the seventh in Iowa. Yeah. Then I got the fight coming up July the 23rd in St. Louis. I mean, in all honesty, you look at it, bro. This is what you're about to do is no different than what my dream is. All right, you've been kickboxing for all these years, and now you've never fought on this promotion, and you're going to fight for a title. That's a pinnacle. See, other people aren't looking at it. You know what I'm saying? There's no UFC behind this. There's no Bellator behind this. This is Willie Henderson's dream. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no money behind this either. And ain't no money. Bro, you, you, <laughs> ain't you, no money behind this You're a fighter, I Willie. I get paid, baby. You want to get paid, but, bro, guess what you're doing to get paid? You're fighting for nothing just to get paid one day, yep. you know? So the pinnacle you're reaching, bro, I am I hope you realize that you are reaching that pinnacle. I already know. You know what I'm saying? You really are. As far as kickboxing, bro, what's next? MMA. Now I'm, I'm focused on MMA. Yeah, but you know me, bro. I always tell you I'm a fighter, bro. Look, I, I said it box. once. I'm going to say it again for everybody that, that ain't heard, and even if you have heard and you still keep on asking me about, you know, where my career is going – once I go back to MMA, I'm going to be done with kickboxing. It ain't going to be no more kickboxing. It's going to be strictly MMA. Might have, maybe possibly have a pro kickboxing fight just to make a little bit of money in between MMA fights. But once I go back to MMA, back to MMA. So stop asking. You heard it here. You know what I'm saying? I feel you there. But yeah, you know I'm a little different right there. Everybody because everybody wants to know that. You know, everyone's like, oh, what, when are you going to go back to MMA? When are you going to? And then, and then they ask me, like, like people, well, they just I know they don't really understand what the like what the path is that I'm on right now because also the path this is not a path that's like okay it's not like a professional sport where it's like okay you play in high school and then you try to get uh, into a certain college and then you have to get drafted into the NFL like there's a certain system in MMA there is no system mm-hmm. you might be doing jujitsu tournaments a lot to get ready for MMA fights you might be um, doing a lot of wrestling tournaments, you might be doing kickboxing or boxing. Like, there's so many different paths and co- other competitions that help you grow to get better in MMA. So it's kind of like an unwritten road. And so a lot of people, like, literally, literally a lot of people don't even know that I'm, I'm an MMA fighter. They think I'm just a kickboxer. They can you know? think what they want. <laughs> I mean, like, that's a lot of people, they just think that because that's all they've seen for the last four years is they haven't seen me doing any MMA fights. They've mm-hmm. just seen kickboxing, so they think yeah. that I'm a kickboxer. And I, I tell them all, like, no, I'm going back to MMA soon. And, you know, once I do that, I have a few a few uh, MMA fights and then go pro. And Ain't it kind of funny how some of these guys will be in the gym just kind of doing kickboxing all the time, preparing for you, and then you're in the gym doing arm bars, and then you stand up and you start striking, and then you know you're doing judo, and then we're wrestling and defense. It's like, bro, we mix it up all the time. You you, you look at it like, oh, if I want to kickbox, I only got to focus on kickboxing. Like, bro, this is not that, bro. When you're an artist, you're disciplined. You know, you're disciplined enough to 
if we, we've been doing this all this time, bro, I had 11 kickboxing matches constantly training in MMA. Like, that's we're disciplined I, enough to do it. I think it's a lot more. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the MMA fighters I see doing kickboxing, boxing, uh, jujitsu tournaments, because we know that they're spending a lot of time doing other things while they might be fighting a guy that only boxes, a guy that only does kickboxing, only a jujitsu fighter. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when I go to these like jujitsu tournaments, I know half those guys might be doing MMA like me and they're spend half the time striking, half the time grappling, but half of those guys literally all they do is jujitsu and okay. it's going to be a tougher it's going to be a tougher match with those guys, mm -hmm. you know? Cuz they're spending like if I spend 5 every like 5 hours I spend doing jujitsu, they're probably doing 10 to 15 or more, you mm -hmm. know? Cuz we have to mix it up and do, you know, judo, jujitsu, striking and but but that's to me you know cage work when you one dimensional bro like and then you do what we do um you you normally a step ahead you know and, and a lot of the black belts you know in most arts bro are pretty much a step ahead against anybody else they face but i do feel like mma gives you a an advantage whenever you step into an individual you know, because we put in the time too. you know, um, and because our minds are so complex with the way we think when we simplify things. We do pretty good. Hey, have you been seeing a lot of videos online of like like boxers shooting, like taking people down, <laughs> doing double legs and shit? Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, you see a lot of MMA fighters like doing the wrong stuff or. Like, say it's a jujitsu comp, they take someone down, then they raise their hand up, throw a punch, and then quickly realize this ain't no MMA fight. And yep. yeah, it, Houston it's Alexander, funny when you see stuff he, like uh, that. he had a bare knuckle, bro. And uh, dude hit the deck, bro, and Houston punched him again. I'm looking like, for yeah, real? you ready for MMA? Yeah. Man, the dude's 50 years old, bro, still in the game, man. Still in the game, still loving it. Started out a street fighter, bro, got into MMA, and now he's bare knuckling, bro. Like, man. Martial arts is beautiful, bro. Like, age doesn't matter. Yeah. All that matters is where you are and your mentality, bro. Don't be out here trying to get punch drunk, looking at yourself like a fighter. Oh, I can bang whatever you hit me with. I'm cool. I'm 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 a, I'm a win. Like, bro, be smart, man. Protect yourself at all times. Yeah, I'm bro. not coming out of this punch drunk. No, man. I'm, no. I'm not doing it either, bro. I'm sorry. Y'all can hate how I fight. Y'all can love how I fight. Beat me. Man, I see so many guys like, like Hamzat Shamayev right before his fight with Gilbert Burns. He got his face split wide open, like he had to get a bunch of stitches. Like that shouldn't be happening. No, man. And no. look, so that goes to show how he's training, right? Mm -hmm. How's he probably training if he's got his face split open? He's not protecting himself. He's not probably not wearing headgear, you know, things like that. Like, come on, man. You training you hard, fight. getting hit too hard, and then look what happened in his fight. But that tells you a lot about a person's composure, too. You know, like their composure. Some people look at a fight like, oh, this is a fight. This is like it's war. A scrap. This is war. But, bro, the people who win the war, well, well Sun Tzu said it best. Um, the best way to win a war is to never fight at all. Right. Then I don't lose anything. You know, like I want to be on offense. Yes, but defense has to be a part of my game. So my offense is my defense, and my defense is my offense. Right. Period. Like, if y'all look at it, it's solely offense. Oh, if I get on them and I get them early, you know, I can finish them. You're going to try to get on me early. You're going to chase me around, and I'm going to pick you apart. Right. What you want to do? You're going to sit here. You're going to be You gonna be a man. You're going to be an artist, bro, and you're going to try to figure me out, or you think you're just about to come out here and try to dominate me? That's your choice, bro. Hey, right, we're trying to win moving in any direction. By any Forwards, means. backwards, sideways, up, down, inside out. Yeah. Behind your asshole. <laughs> that didn't Look. come out right. <laughs> but, uh. You nasty, Willie. You nasty. Uh, but, yeah, man. I mean, bro, I look at these guys, man, and there's some there's some real great fighters out here, bro. I, I in all honesty, bro, yeah. if I'm, if I'm a completely honest, my opponent isn't bad, bro. He's probably going to be one of the best fighters I face, you know, in my career. I've, I've faced some good ones. You know, I won't say I haven't faced anybody that's on his level, but he is probably one of the tougher guys that anybody's going to see me fight. And I really hope that in this fight, everybody realizes I'm the truth. What do you think he's going to try to do? Strike or take you down? I, I don't feel like he'll try to take me down, bro. I honestly feel like he'll try to use his length. I noticed that in his fights. He never really initiates the takedown. And that's more than okay with me. Nice. You know, I, I really do hope he tries to stand up with me.
you know, let's see. Let's see. Let's show the world, bro. This is what he really likes to do, I can tell. You know, he really likes to stand up. And, look, I'll beat you there, and I'll beat you anywhere else. What do you want? Let's right. get it. I- I'm ready for whatever. Excuse me. Yeah, it's nice when you actually are well-rounded and you have the confidence to, like, I don't have to plan. Like, if I'm a, if I'm a jiu-jitsu fighter, like, okay, I got to take this guy down. Mm-hmm. If I'm just a striker and I'm not good on the ground, it's like, okay, I can't let this guy take me down. Mm-hmm. But if you're truly well-rounded, it's like, I go on there and I beat him. Yeah. You know? And that's real. That's pretty awesome. You yeah, know? bro. I mean, I, I watch, I've, lately I've been watching myself. I tell you all the time, Willie, like I didn't used to like hearing myself on a microphone, stuff yeah. like that, bro. I really didn't like watching my old fights, you know, whether I won or I lost, you know. That's everybody, though. Everyone feels like that. Like, it's like cringy listening to yourself and watching yourself. Yeah. But as I've been watching my, a lot of my old fights now, you know, it's like, okay, my transitions are getting better. Okay, you could be a little more calm here. Okay, you didn't have to let them pass there, you know. Um, bro, it, 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 this Okay, game, that time where you was about to throw the jab, it would have landed. The time mm-hmm. you was about to throw that kick, it would have landed. That time you was about to, you see all the things, and you remember like, oh, that was when I thought about throwing this. That mm-hmm. was when I thought about throwing that. But you wasn't sure about it in the fight, right? Yep. But you see, yeah, it would have landed, and they wouldn't have defended. Yep. Like, so my advice to a lot of people is, don't be afraid to go back and watch yourself, man. You gotta, you gotta grow. You gotta if grow. If you want to grow, I mean, that's that's the best way. Yeah, you know, you helped me out a lot with that, Willie. Like real talk. Think about it. That first time I sat back and I watched my fight, it was with you. You know, like really, like it. I've needed that. That was I, the first time? Yeah, bro. I've never, I mean, six years. Really. I love watching my fights. No matter how good or how bad I do, I love watching my fights because I get to see truly my sub 360, like you always say. Yeah. Like, seeing myself from the outside, like, okay, I thought I was good at this. I'm not, clearly not that good at that yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually doing this very well. Like, it, you know, it's, I feel like it's, it's literally a must. Yeah. It's a must. I mean, I, I, I say it's a, it's, mm, it's necessary and it can help, right? It can help. But um, if I can't see me 360, you can, you know? And, and one thing about our team is we care about each other. We see each other. So before I used to watch my fights, y'all were how I knew what I was doing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Right. I had a good team behind me. Right. I had a group of guys who they know my skills just about the way I do, you know? No different than I know yours, bro. I know what you're good at. I know right. what, what you're not good at. What, what I'm working on, yeah, what I'm still fixing. And when I can be an asset to you, I am, you know? So that video is no different than your teammates, you know? And, you know, I read the Bible exactly. a lot, bro. Uh, how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Once we're in connection, going for the same goal, bro, we're probably some of the best people for each other, you know? So to have a good team, bro, I'm blessed with it. Small team, great guys, full of knowledge, bro. Um, and I, I mean, like right now I'm gonna just throw a big shout out to uh, Shu Jin. You know, that's my head MMA coach, Danny Rees. Great boxing mind, bro. Great boxer, bro. Great person. You know, um, really just down to earth. And he's a man who's been through a lot of things and knows how to get the best out of a man. You know, really bring you, you know, to who God called you to be. And then Curtis Aikman, bro, he's a heavyweight uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu, man. The guy has really helped me so much. You know, I couldn't thank these guys enough, bro. My kicks, sharpening things up. You know, Willie, you know what you've done, bro. You know what you've done, bro. You see it all. Uh, Jen is just, you know, like he he understands the transitions. Ron, bro, a four-time state champion, bro, and we get to work out with this man daily. Yeah. He, he's really crisped me up quite a bit, bro. I'm blessed, man. For real. I'm blessed. It's so like literally have everything you need. Right here, bro. Like that's that's such a like hard thing to come by. Most people have to do what? Travel <laughs> to get that. Yeah, they do. And go to different people, different places, instead of having all the guys you need right there in, in your hometown. Like yeah. It really is a blessing. Like, and no different real. than any other gym, bro. We know you. Everybody has their times. You know you have your falling outs. But, bro, look at our team, bro. We, we stick together. Like, when we come in the room, we bring the energy. Right. I'm sorry, bro. Like, I believe in my teammates. They believe in me. We're going to be world champions. I hope they're ready. We're from right here in Cape Girardeau, bro. I was born and raised in Sykeston. I'm going to put Sykeston on the map. 
Yeah, I'm I mean, Andre Cape on the map. It's on the map, but I mean, as far as MMA, who's made it from where we are? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody yet. Yeah. I mean. Nobody yet. Yeah. <laughs> you can't name no names. No. Nobody's made it big yet from yeah. here. Not at you all. You know? So, yeah, we're going to be the first ones. You know, I, I just, man, I just really want to just prove to myself that I can do what I've wanted to do ever since I was a child, which is travel the world fighting the best the best fighters and beating them. Yeah. And, and making it look pretty and making it look fun and making it look cool. Yeah. And whatever happens along the way, bro, of course we'll get we'll get touched. It, not that we want to, but it'll happen, yeah. bro. We're warriors too. You know, I sit here and say we're artists, bro, and, and, and we're not just fighters, but we're all that in a package, bro. You know, you remember when we used to spar, bro, and how, like, we'd be touching each other a little bit, and then you would kind of wait. Wait and bang. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, this dude, he's uh, pretty smart, man. You know, like, this game is about a lot calculating. more. Calculating. Yeah, it's really about a finding, lot more than finding that fighting. hole. Mm-hmm. I had to. I'm like, this big dude going to knock me on my <laughs> ass. if I, I got to really, really, you know, really, really just find that hole and get in there, get out, and not get touched because, yeah, yeah it, it's not easy taking punches from you know, guys your size. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to think about it. And then it. you got them long ass arms. Like I'm, I'm a lot taller than you, but your arms are so long. It's so like, uh, deceptive. Like, yeah, it, yeah it's, and, it's and, weird. And this is what I love, you know, especially about us is because people are looking at us where we are right now. Like, Oh, he's good. But, and then they see us fight and they think they know us, but they're not understanding that we are growing each and every day, you're not going to see that same fighter you saw the last fight in this fight. I'll be there in the flesh, but what I have up here, that's for me to know and you to find out, bro. Right. So we're always going to be entertaining fighters. You're always going to enjoy watching us fight, and that's that. You know, I'm like I said, once again, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm not trying to make it put anybody down. I'm not going to do that, but I'm a force to be reckoned with. And anybody on our team is the same. Like, you're going to have to bring your A game. They know it. If you think you're going to beat one of us. They know it. And, I I, look, I leave that card on the table. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's why I got haters messaging me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, laughing at my posts, and then then, uh, private, you know, DMing me, talking shit, and all this stuff. And I don't even know who these guys are. Cloud chaser. Straight cloud chaser. Yes. That's all it is. You know? It's crazy even, when, but the thing is, this ain't gonna get no call from me because I'm not even gonna mention your name. You mad at me because I feel good at my, about myself, right? For real, like for real. You you you, you, you mad, mad at me because I went to a tournament and won. Yeah, and then you want to say some all oh, that's a beginners tournament type shit. Like, well, if it's so easy to go there and win, why weren't you, you there? there? Yeah, <laughs> if you think you could be someone like me, you should have been there. Yeah, look. I mean, most of the places we go, bro, we know the promoters. If you really want to fight me, bro, come on. I can I, – I'll help you make it happen. And I tried to do that. Yeah. Yeah, bro, look, let them talk, Willie. What about Willie Henderson? Man, Willie Henderson, I'm telling you, this Your guy. Your next fight, yes. May the 7th, uh, 16 days, man. I can't wait. I'm itching. It's going to be – man, it's going to be so fun. It, mm-hmm. it, dude, it, I've man, it's like ev- – you would think that it can't get no more fun, and that every time it just gets more fun. Yeah. You get more comfortable. You get more confident. You get more punches in the ring. You get more knockouts. You get, you know what I'm saying, more belts. You know, it's going to be a pretty little uh, belt at uh, uh, Alliance. What's it called? Alliance. Or no, um, Ascendancy Fighting Championship. Look, don't even know the name of the dang organization. Same just thing as me, bro. Fight, it's crazy. Know? No, I, th- I know I'm fighting on Fight Hard. But this is a pretty good um, uh, fight promotion, it looks like. You know, it should be a nice venue, nice little setup. And the guy that I'm fighting is just some little short 9-3 uh, and three kickboxer. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna piece him up, bro. Look, yeah. mark my words, he's not going to make it out the second round. Okay. I honestly doubt he'll make it out the first. But I might, I might let it go to the second round just to get a little bit more ring time mm-hmm. and just be a little more selective. Yeah. Like, literally, we're the type of fighters where people are sitting on the side saying, come on, throw a button, do something, do something. Like, they're waiting, right? Mm-hmm. Ten seconds goes by, haven't thrown a punch, just moving around, calculating. Another 20 seconds goes by, haven't thrown nothing. Bang. Now this, this guy's laying on the ground. They're like, oh. Yeah. 
we thought he just didn't want to even do nothing. He's mm-hmm. looking like he's just moving around, and all of a sudden he knocked this guy out. Yeah. Like, the last knockout I got, literally, I, I remember in the cage, I heard someone in the crowd say, come on, do something, and then knocked them out. Yeah. You know, well, knocked him down, TKO, and then he got back up. Or, well, he got back up and then finished him. But yeah. it's like right before you got these impatient guys, like, dude, if you're a fan, if you're in the crowd, just sit, relax, and wait and watch. Yeah. Like, enjoy the beauty of it. Don't just be yelling, acting silly. Like, now you see why I, I mean, said I, everything I, I, I said. But at the same time, not hating, not, not mad if you do because we do the same thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But. You know, it's nice when there's a certain level of calmness in the crowd so everyone can really pay attention to what's going on in the ring, et cetera. Yeah. But, yeah, bro. Um, you remember after my last fight, you so said, look, man, you got real personal whenever you got on the microphone. I said yeah, exactly you what you just said, bro. Like, my fans, you know, like, man, don't you just appreciate a win? Like, bro, I, I everyone ain't going to be just some stone-cold knockout, bro. You can try. Even Connor tried. You know, and yeah, he called out a couple fights and said what he would do. It wasn't all stone cold knockouts. No, and he then didn't look knock what out happened. Max Holloway. Early look what in. happened with Nate Diaz. Come on, man. But look at how he went up from one forty five to one seventy and fought that man. Like, mm. and if he had a little bit more time to prep, Nate wasn't gonna beat him. Yeah, bro, Connor's he's dude. He's in levels levels above Nate. In, levels in striking. What happened when he went against Khabib? No, Khabib I'm, sat him down. He's like levels of too. he's levels above Nate on the ground too. Mm. They make weight classes for a reason. They make yeah. So we're so I'm talking more of a pound for pound for pound thing, not so much like. Well, no, I'm talking about him versus Nate. I believe he's truly better all around as a yeah. martial artist. He's more all technical, around. more crispy. Right. Most definitely. You know, Nate's a fighter. Nate's a fighter, and he's kind of smart, you know, because he's been in the game so long. But uh, does he have I'm sorry, all but the, the man assets? don't even know how to throw kicks. Yeah. Hey. He looks silly throwing kicks in his fights. I mean, he does. I don't like those slaps he be doing, but hey, they work. They get people's eyes and stuff like I that. I mean, that's that's fine. You can slap you can slap somebody up real quick. You know, slap them up real quick, real quick. Slap them up. Puh, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever. But yeah. but yeah, bro. So um, yeah. So Jen said the other day he was like, we was talking. He said something. Something. He's like, oh, I, I was talking about like just how I'm, I just can't wait to um, wait for this fight. And I was like, I can't wait to go to MMA and. Uh, and he was like, he's like, I just can't wait for, uh, you know, in seven months. And so, you know, when you go pro, I can actually make some money. <laughs> I was like, what? Seven months? Yeah. So, you know, y'all stay tuned. I'm going to be going pro very soon. Like, yeah. very soon. And I just know it's going to be just a bunch of just nasty KOs, bro. Once yeah. I can really throw elbows and then knees to the head, bro, I'm telling you, watch how, dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling all y'all just, Watch, mark my words. It's gonna be a bunch of knockouts, knees to the face, elbows to the face. It's gonna happen. I'm yeah. telling you, like, yeah, you gotta think about it, bro. Most of my bro, I feel it in all in my fights. All my fights, I be feeling it. I'm like, oh my god, this knee to the face is just right there. Most of my amateur fights were in Missouri. Missouri doesn't allow knees to the nope. head or elbows, you know. So my first fight, bro, like I, I saw an opportunity. I'm like, man, should I knee him? Uh too late. You know what I'm saying? Oh, should I elbow him? Uh too late. You know, and then the uh, fight after that, bro, you start to see me finally starting to work him in. You know, I finally started to work him in. And now, bro, come on. Come on. Bring bring it on. That's why it's to a point now to where when we train, it's like every time we train, we truly need to be putting on elbow pads mm-hmm. and, and, and sh- you know, showing them without being scared of like, like, you, you show it, and I lean into it and accidentally get elbowed in the head, you know, mm-hmm. really being able to, like, just show it in all the movement because, you know, you're a pro now. I'm going to be pro soon. Like, the elbows are there all yep. day long. Yep. When you're in elbow reach, they're there, and we have to be aware of it. We have to be ready for it, and we have to be able to flow into those, oh, yeah. you know. But Not be like, oh, elbow, <gasps> here we go. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's like when that elbow, when the, the moment's there, Elbow's already thrown. Yeah. By the time he thought about it, he's already getting hit with it. Yeah. You know, so. It's coming, bro. Dude, the elbows is just vicious. Yeah. For I'm real. still growing. That's all I can say, man. I'm still <laughs> growing. 32 years old, bro. Yeah. Still growing in the arts. Look, I, I, I'm going to be a problem. Y'all, y'all going to hear my name. 
They, they're going to hear it. They're going to see it, bro. They're going to see me at the top one day. And when I do, I'm coming. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to keep on going until my career is over. You know? Like, what's up? How long do you see yourself fighting? I really don't know. I've fought all my life, bro. So, I mean, do I want to fight until my 40s? No, bro. I got a wife and two kids. So like, man, I want to I wanna build. And then I want to help other people, you know, get to where I've been, you know. Um, I want to make sure that my kids live a good life, but also understand the hard work that it takes to have that good life. You know, I want, I mean, I'm a family man, bro. I really want to be able to take all this back home to my family and see what my influence and the things that I've done has. I really want to see the benefit of it so that, you know, my family, you know, can ride that train right along with me, you know. We can set it up for generations to come. Right. Yeah. That generational wealth. Yes, sir. Like yeah. I said, nobody's ever done this out of Sykeston, bro. So, unlike most people, you know, GoPro, disappear, want to go buy a house over here, over there, bro. Look, cost of living's cool down here, bro. I like this simple life. You know, I can <laughs> give me the money, bro. I can go to California when I want, you know. But right. I'm living here, you know. Like, I, I just want to make sure that my family eats. I'm not even going to lie, bro. I'd love to move to, like, Arizona, somewhere where the weather is nicer. Just mm -hmm. the weather, you know? Yeah. Like, where it's, like, mostly nice, warm days, a lot of sun. You heard that Outcast song? You can plan a pretty picnic, but you can't predict the weather. Yeah, bro. Like, come on, man. You go anywhere, bro. You don't know what's about to happen, man. That's true. Yeah, so, I don't know, bro. Um but I heard that they got good property there, and mm -hmm. it's just a it's just a good place to live. But I got some family down there, bro. But me, I just want to live, you know, close enough with my family. We've already talked about this before. I'd love mm -hmm. to have like like a big a big like community, you know, with all my closest family members and friends live close together, and you know, I'm trying to do some development for real. Yeah, for real. Yep. You know, have the money to do that. That'd be God's will, bro, to happen. It will, yeah. bro. You know, um, you know. Most of the time, bro, I only talk about fighting. I don't ever really talk about me personally, bro. Just because I know um, a lot of this world ain't ready for where my mind is. You know, like they don't really have an understanding of why I feel the way I feel. You know, I try not to get too personal. You know, because if you want to, if you want to know me, come get to know me. You know, if you want to talk about fighting, we can talk about fighting. You know, like. These people don't really know Willie Henderson, you know. They know us as fighters, and that's what this podcast is for. So right. I, I leave it at that, bro, you know. But I, I'm I'm definitely grateful, bro. God has been very, very good to me, you know. Great friends, great career, you know. My wins, I know that's all a blessing, bro. You know, my losses, all a blessing. You know, everything's a lesson. And um, bro, I just can't wait till we get to the top, bro. For real. And when we get there, I'm more than willing to be patient for it because I'm only going to get older, you know. Every day, you're just kind of getting closer and closer. Oh, we've to been very day. patient. Yeah, so. Most people go pro way before we did, you yeah. know. Well, I haven't yet, but I'm saying by, th by the time I go pro, most people would have, most people like me, bro, they would have been went pro. Mm -hmm. Then, you know. I've been hearing that, bro. Which I would be pro now if not for that stupid knee injury I had. Yeah. You know, I would be pro now for sure. Yeah. But that was like a year and a half off, you know, so. It, but you got to look at it, bro. Was it not necessary? It was um, it it was a, a, a blessing in disguise yeah. for sure. I'm going to say, bro, it happened. So you can't say it wasn't necessary. Like, bro, the way things happen in this world, nothing happens by chance, bro. He's the author and the finisher of all things, bro. Like, me personally, I'll say um, you've matured from it. A lot. I've got to watch it. And witness I appreciate it. what I have so much more now. It's like, oh, I could not even be able to do this. Yeah. Like, you've taken the time, bro. You've rested it. You you still, to this day, kind of deal with whatever it is that comes to you. You know, you are um, you're growing as a man in this journey, bro. So, everything happens for a reason. Right. Really. For real. Yeah. I'm grateful for you, bro. Thank you for uh, having me on. Hey, man, it's going to be like this until, you know, the day we die. We're going to be 80 years old. I'm like, yeah, man, you went back in 2022 and we knocked that guy out, man. <laughs> yep. You know. Yeah, grandparents, bro. For you real. kids, man, that's watching this, bro. Yeah, so, yeah, bro. It's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, it really for is. real. So, uh, yeah, so Springfield. 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 It's going to be fun. I got mine coming up, and then yours is. 
like what two i guess two weeks two after weeks that after, two yes, weeks sir so it's gonna be a fun month yeah it is bro and you know bro i'm just happy to uh get to help you prep for it bro as usual man so i just hope all y'all keep watching because we we are going somewhere it's it's already in the motion bro for real you know promoters constantly hitting me up you know and it's crazy how I'm getting offered title fights when y'all barely saw me get title fights as an amateur. Didn't care you're nothing. A, yeah, you're getting yeah. offered uh, title fights already? And, yeah, in different places, bro. Talking about pros. And, yeah, most of these guys are decent. But, bro, come on. They going to find out what happens right here in old Cape Girardeau, Missouri. If right. y'all think we lacking, y'all wrong. Right. Y'all wrong. So, But, see, the thing is this. As a pro, them titles don't mean nothing mm -hmm. unless the money is there. And, I mean... Yeah, unless the money is there, it's like them titles don't really mean nothing. Yep. Like I said, man, you're dealing with these promotions, bro. It, it, with them, yeah, it's a lot about, most of it is about money, you know? And it is. Okay, so it takes money to make money. You, cre you create your own worth. Once you create your worth, you better know it. No different than Floyd, bro. You better know that you were made, you know, for this, and don't let nobody take your worth away from you or use you and abuse you. So... Right. Here we are. So um, so how's your weight and everything? Like My weight's good, bro. You know, these dudes be sucking weight. You know, I did, bro. I fought 70, bro. You're, you're I fighting a 70 this fight? Yeah, no, I'm fighting 85, bro. Oh, that's I ain't great. sucking yeah. no weight, bro. Like, that's cool. Come on. You can you can cut all the weight you want, bro. Let's see where you are in that third round. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about to eat you alive. Like, see, I, I still know nothing about cutting weight, so, like... As far as me fighting at one, like, I know I can cut to 135. Because all these other guys that are walking around at 155 and maybe even a little above are fighting at, dude. Cutting from 80 and 90. How Jermaine Sterling? 176 pounds. I'm like, how did this man make 135? You got a pot belly right now, bro. You got to think about it. he looks huge. 20, um... Every bit of 20 to 30 of those pounds would go off if he just stopped eating. It was just food in his stomach for real, yeah, like a bro. bunch of, and then water. Yeah, that's all, man. I guarantee, like, uh, that just happened, bro. You get excited after these fights, bro. You get excited after weighing. Like, it. Sean O'Malley, he walks around at about 155, 156. I'm like, so, okay, yeah, I can make 135, too. But yeah. look how they be looking when they weigh in, bro. Yeah, bro. I don't even know if that's, like, I is mean, it even worth it? But I, I, I don't know if it, is it an age thing because when I was young and I wrestled and I cut weight, bro, you could wrestle six matches in a day, bro, as long as you stayed hydrated. But then you got to cut the weight again, and we just kept doing it. And now as you get older, it's like, man, you see yeah. it in fights, bro. People be doing good, bro, and gassed out third round, bro, because that weight just starts to get to uh, you. Yeah, man. <laughs> just drop down. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm, I'm really loving just kind of leaning my body up at 85. You know, really just lifting, getting stronger, bro, working out just as, as hard as I can, going as hard as I can. And hey, you know what I tell you? Hey, Willie, I'm going to outwork you today. What's up? <laughs> What's up, bro? Like, you, you going to be saying I was like, uh-huh. Like, huh? Yeah. Outwork me. Like, yes, sir. I didn't know this was a competition. Yes, sir. You trying to get me to work harder? Oh, hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But look, think about yesterday, bro. You pushed yourself hard, bro, the whole time. All it took was another person in the gym with you that's like, hey, we, we came here to eat, so if you ain't going to eat with me, I'm going to skate on past you. See, and that's the thing that I've really been taking pride in myself. Like, when I do my workouts by myself, I'm pushing. Mm -hmm. I don't need, look, I don't need somebody right there next to me telling me to push hard, making me push hard, which a lot of these guys, they literally need that. Without yeah. that, they'll just be out of shape. Yep. I don't need that. I'm going to push myself hard, like. Trust me, I know, bro. I've known you for years. Why you think I wanted you as a teammate? Right. You know, like, come on, bro. We've we've been we've been doing this, bro. Dude. Yeah. One hundred percent dedicated. Now, can we say that? And in, in, in uh, what a lot of people don't understand is they'll look at a fighter and they'll see him start to gas and they think, oh, he's not in shape. No. No, that's not. Hey, bro, you got to think about the mental things that we do to ourselves, holding our breath. You know. Anxious and Being nervous too and scared. Tense and, and they have the nerves too. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, come on, man. Out of shape, bro. Can I go? Can I go five rounds? Of course, I, I can go five rounds right now, bro. I actually get better as the rounds pass. Like, yeah. I'm gonna look a lot better in the round in round two and in round three. Yeah. Because I'm loosening up. I'm warming up. I'm feeling myself. I'm in my flow. Like. Yep. 
You know, I, I'm I'm to the point to where I can honestly say I'm done worried about my cardio. Yeah. Like I used to worry so Maybe much about getting tired, dude. I, I, yeah. I hate it because I dang near had PTSD for my first couple fights where I was not training at all, just jumping mm-hmm. in there. And yeah, that was that was those were just terrible experiences. Even though I won some of those, like it was not it was not fun. Your composure has changed, bro. One hundred percent. Really has, bro. You you're in the moment in the fights now. You're not uh outside of yourself you're not thinking oh i'm gonna do this to him like no bro everything's just kind of clicking and going right you know no different than my last fight bro i was popping him with them jabs bro man dude come on bro just wait just wait wait I, i'm a really about to settle down in this game and i'm i'm about to start picking some people apart bro yep. you know i love to fight no different than them they might not see it like bro of course i i through my amateur career, I could have just went out and tried to knock a lot of people out, pick them up, slam them on their head, and beat them down. I could have done that. But, bro, this is what I was preparing for. I was preparing for these pros, these guys who train to go five, five rounds if they have to and are willing to take whatever punishment they have to take. Bro, it took, it took a loss as a pro for me to understand that I have to care less about what a person thinks about what I've done. I have to care less about where his cardio may be. I have to... Be in the moment. I have to enjoy and love myself. Period. Yeah. Once that part comes, bro, you can stand in front of any man. Yeah. There you go. Yep. And stop worrying about the outcome and all. Like, so many people just get caught up worried about the outcome. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about that. I just get in there and do my thing. Yeah. Winners win. There you go. Like, Like, that's what it's about. You still got to fight the fight first. There's nothing more beautiful than that feeling of being in that cage. And everything is just clicking and working right. Yep. Like, what, what about the point when you're in the cage, bro, and you don't hear anything outside of it, bro? That's crazy. It's crazy how some, you know, like, I remember probably at, like, fight 11. Or all I, you hear is your corner man. Yeah. I stepped in the cage, bro, and it was just like, you know, rubbing my feet on the mat. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm in the dojo. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa. Maybe this is weird, man. Maybe I shouldn't feel like this. But, man, bro, yeah. that's what comes in time, bro. The new feelings, you're like, dang, is this, is this how it's supposed to feel? Yes, sir. Dude, when I get, when I when I finally started to get in there and I was just 100% relaxed and comfortable and had that little, like, giggly, like, like joyousness, I was like, this is how it's supposed to feel. Yep. Like this right here. When I can look back at my corner man and he's not nervous, I'm not nervous. Yep. He's got a little grin, or he's just like, you know, just sitting there watching, and I'm just like, just waiting for my opponent to, you know, come out or mm-hmm. wait for the fight to start. Like that's how it's supposed to feel. Nice and calm, nice and relaxed. Like, no, no type of nervousness, no type of jitters. Just calm. You know, yeah. it's it's really that's what I've been waiting on since I was. That's what I've wanted since I was a kid. Like watching Jackie Chan fight. Like, I grew up watching Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. And mm-hmm. watching Jackie, you know, which they're two different type of uh, fighters, you know, when it comes to on the screen at least. Mm-hmm. Jackie Chan, he'd just be, like, laughing, goofing off, you know what I'm saying, using his surroundings and and really just looking like it's not, like the Ninja Turtles. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's not even a big deal. Yeah. You know, they're just bumping around and, and, and banging. Like, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. You know, and uh, it seems like a lifetime in martial arts, bro, do that to you, bro. You really start to get comfortable with, you, with yourself. You know, Bruce Lee said uh, martial arts is naturally expressing oneself, but you can't naturally express yourself until you've learned how to express yourself. And that's what the techniques are. You know, a lot of us will sit here and put the techniques on a pedestal. Some of us will put um, ourselves on a pedestal instead of letting the art speak. Right, yeah. exactly. Let the arts flow through you, like. Constantly. And it's fun, bro. When, once you get outside of yourself and, and you watch yourself, you're like, man, I, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. I know how you it feel is, now, bro. It is, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, like wow. You, you, you watch yourself and you're just like, wow. Mm-hmm. It looks a lot cooler from outside looking in than it does behind your eyes in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just looks so much cooler. Yeah. What we have for time? Uh, it's, I don't want to. 47. So what time? What time you got? Um, like you, how much more time you got? Um, I don't, don't want to keep you too long, or yeah. I mean, I got all I got till the kids get out, so Look you know, you. it's, That's it's a whatever long for podcast, me. Ain't it? <laughs> no, I figure we do about about two hours. Usually, it's about how long we do an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Yeah. You know, okay. But just whenever you know, 
just let me know whenever you got to roll out and you yeah. know we'll be good to go but you feel it right now you know Keisha called me though what's up you want to you want to pull up uh, your opponent's fights maybe watch one and what's up critique them yeah let's go all uh, right just tell him uh let's get on YouTube and look up his fights I don't know if you'll find any uh any of his like most recent fights a lot of his fights are just amateur fights okay what's his name uh M A R C O Hutch H U T C H M M A. That's the most recent one. That's I think that's probably it right there. The first one. Uh, yeah, let's click on that. Yeah, let's go. Oh, that's him versus Bring out our next Kelly battle. Birch. Kelly Birch used to Please wrestle for uh, Farmington. I used to go to his high school and uh, right, wrestle. Turn, turn the volume down, son. And we are back here for our main card of the evening. Marco Hutch makes yeah, his way down, to the cage, the way, the way. making his professional mixed martial arts debut tonight. Yeah. He is coming off his last Emmy fight where he had an eight-second KO right, up on by a head yeah. kick. He is ready to put on a show tonight. Right he feels that nothing is more oh, real than a training camp, and this one went down very well. It's a constant grind. He missed life events for this, but he told me that he is absolutely ready for action tonight. Hutch is brimming with confidence after his last amateur fight KO victory. He told me he wants to be the best pro in the world, and he is working, and that starts tonight. He told me that he looks to be consistent in this fight. He told me that the last time he was out, even okay. with an eight second head kick, the fights before that, he said I was not consistent in that action tonight. I may not have nothing to do with the size, just mentality. Yeah, just the mentality, you know. I mean, and that's okay. But this, his size may be what sets that off, why he thinks like Making that. Making your like, pro debut in a situation like this, in for front of the big lights, in front of the pay-per-view, like it has to be like a about, scary situation you know, for him. Me, he seems very calm, but it's like one of those things that you're always waiting to see what happens. What yeah, really yeah. Can only can time will tell how cool and confident he really is. Alright, come on, let's fast forward to this. Kelly Birch. Very capable on his feet. Go, Hutch. Like, uh, Fighting out of Farmington, kind of Missouri, Kelly Birch. Okay, let's see what he's got. Referee John Duber has the call this was? for this fight. First five, one on oh, our main card okay, of the so evening. Clearly going to be a lot better than go. this. Yeah, he is. See, he throws a punch. Now we down see the pipe, bro. Marco Hutch has a so considerable height speed. advantage over Kelly Birch. I mean, yeah, a little bit of low inside low kick. Five years Birch ago, on the, the groin he's going to be completely different in, in a sense. But, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't. Nice Hutch kick, doing dude. a very good job of ranging that distance. He wants you know, to keep the fight long, where his long people, arm bro. and long feet can person, take advantage. Tall, Birch can't get in for the takedown. to get more leverage. And I'm like, man, why? why? Hutch definitely has some you good know, footwork here, landing enough. those combinations. But again, as you like say, said, kicking against a wrestler me, can become a bad thing. Very dangerous. But Hutch is looking he for a guillotine loves this right guillotine. now. If Birch does take him down, hey, he wants to pass MMA, guard baby. immediately. He was going for it while dude's got his head on the inside. Now Birch is fighting it. for that takedown. Wow, dude tap quick. Quick tap. Oh, yeah, Let's oh see if they got anything. Goodness. Look and see if he got anything more recent. Very dude, nice submission from Hutch. Ladies and gentlemen, he comes from a decent team, so they're not trying to put him out there like that, bro. Yeah, go ahead and watch it. Man, he got a behemoth on his side, right? Yeah. Michigan, Marco. <laughs> I think he, uh, he might have uh, guillotined this guy, too. There you go. Shamrock. I haven't been in that cage before. I haven't fought Shamrock yet. It'll come, bro. Quick touch of the gloves. Got his hands low. Good shot straight in. Oh Eller my. immediately looking for that takedown. Heavy around, pressure oh here yeah. coming up against That's the Afro all. Samurai. Yeah, this is how he's going to try to. Yeah, see, he's squirmy, bro. He, he, Big like takedown, takedown for Eller. A lot of power from Eller. You can see he's a very powerfully Wait. built guy. He's looking to swarm him right now. Use that size. Use that strength. No, real squirmy. Like I said, but bro, what he needs to not do is blow his wad. Somebody yeah. really just don't want, you know. Ain't These are very high energy, anything, high so. output situations. Damn. Yeah. Suplex. 
you know. And like I said, I feel just like just gave um, him the good old he's, suplex he's ride. Not that strong. And those are you know, always pretty to watch for the fans. They can talk about hey, you so coming pretty. up from seventy. Well, Exciting I mean, guy, looking to work a neck crank here from half the more, guard. The more a person gets extended, the weaker they are. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of guys don't know how to just use Eller their their working the pressure. Hunt trying right to get back to his feet. He does. Yep. Oh, big hand you know, from it's Hutch. Like holding, the, holding the weight right here is going to be real easy compared to holding it out. Now, let's see if know, those so big, explosive takedowns and attempts. Just don't really Again, don't shoots that, underneath. That long, shoots right into That's an underhook, though. That oh! He look, he Hutch again he looking for that. Locks up the standing guillotine. Hey, look 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 oh, dude. huge look tap dude. out. Just tap, tap, tap. That is it. You're not catching me in a guillotine. If you watch this podcast, you are not catching wow. me. Wow. He said, if you watch this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not, this you're not, bout has not, ended. Yeah, so don't try one minute yeah. and 17 don't seconds. Try. I, I want to touch this, uh, that nose, bro. You see, you see that right there? Let's see if I can twist that thing, bro. You know? Twist that yeah, thing. Yeah, for real, bro. Put uh, Punch in your uh, sternum, you know? Like, punch him right in his medulla oblongata. Oh, he out of there with that one, bro. All right, let's look up my next opponent and see his little whack techniques. All right, so look up uh, Andres, like A N D R E S Lugo. Right there, kickboxing the first one. Yeah. And then this, the second video. How long ago did it say that was? We are lucky to have him here tonight. Please put your in the cage now. Oh, he'll lean back. So, the so look how short this guy is that I'm about to fight. If you look at it, he's his head's barely even above the rope. This is lap, dude. This guy is short. He don't, bro. Bro, like 19, I think. He's about to get waxed. I'm sorry. Look at that. Bro, he's. But I told you he's gonna be a banger, bro. I had never even watched this man's fights, bro. You this touch him, him, you touch him, he's gonna be Ooh, out of this. Here, you know. yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. yeah, he starts leaning, hands down, wide punches, and he gets cracked a lot this fight. He does win this fight at the yep. very end. He lands on right a short look. Do you remember how uh, how Caleb AJ uh, need AJ Johnson uh -huh. at the end? That's yeah. uh, well not at the end, but how he need him. That's kind of he lands a knee like that. Mm -hmm. him, but, but yeah, dude, he's like that hop man. He must be a karate guy. He is a karate guy. Bouncing hands down. I mean, and with those spinning kicks, yeah, bro. bro he's like one of those Look at him, bro. And this is him fighting another guy that's trash because this dude in the yellow trunks is just whack. Everything he's throwing looks ugly. Yeah, so, I mean, this is how I'm fighting. I mean, we already know how I'm going to finish him. He's going to, he, he'll open up his book if you give him an opportunity. He'll show you everything he's got. I mean, it don't look like he has good offense or defense. Honestly, look how he's just cracking. He's just, just trading. Look, boom, he got cracked there. Right there, right there. He keep his hands up, but when he keeps his hands up, he's not moving. Dude. I don't even know how this guy has the. All right, so this is how he has the belt because he, he fought this guy that is just trash. So um, this is guy. Remember when I did the um the kickboxing tournament in Iowa? Yeah. So. The, um, so I was matched up with the guy, and then there was two other guys that got matched up, right? So the one that lost that one, uh, the guy, that, the young kid that had some really good boxing, uh, Trayvon. Uh, uh, no, he's tall. He's got the little hand tattoos on his chest, but he messaged me the other day and said that that this guy, uh, Andres Lugo, won the belt by fighting. He fought this bummy fighter that Trayvon just beat. He said the guy was literally so like, like so inexperienced, like and like underdeveloped. Like he was telling him like how to defend himself as he was beating. You know how you'd be beating someone up, and you'd be like, man, put your hands up. Like you still on them, and they're doing nothing. You're like, man, put your hands up. Like you kind of like 
helping them as you beat them. But one thing you remember from Iowa is some of these promotions have fighters, and then they really want to put their fighters on a pedestal. So if they give him a title, they're going to build his confidence. And I feel like that's all it really is. Well, they're not building this guy's confidence because they're pitting him against me and... No, they're not going to now. Yeah. You know, now, but they, they, they would love for him to come out with the confidence of the fact that he's got a title. Dude. And if he beats you, it kind of takes him to another level of confidence. Now, I'm either going to finish probably with two different things. Right back. All right. I'm either going to finish with my hands, using boxing, or I'm going to axe kick him. See how he leans back? That's axe kick city. Look, that knee right there. Ah, got him. So that's how you win that fight. But you see, his just technique is just, this is pretty, pretty whack. Yeah, you can see. So they, they tie up, and he's just. Check. Probably working. Dude, this was ten months ago, bro. This is when this is about as recent as it gets. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you can change a lot in ten months, but do most amateurs change a lot in ten months? There you go. He can't knee me in the stomach because his knee can't go up that high. He would have to literally jump. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, that's that was his fight. You know. Whack. I think he's going to get pieced up in the first round. You know, I just don't – I don't think he's even going to make it to the second. I, I don't believe he will either, bro. For real. Like, if you come out and you uh, – Be if, selective, be yeah. precise, and I'm just – just sit him down. I don't – I really do not see him making out the first round. So, yeah. That's Eat, what they're feeding me. Yeah. Eat. Eat. You feel me? Line them up, we knock them down. Right. There you go. Simple That's as that. It. Yeah, man. Um – I don't know. This journey is different, bro. You know, sitting here studying these fighters and stuff like that, like, man, it's it's not how it used to be, bro. You know, where the nerves come over you, you know, and you're wondered, worried about what what he can do and stuff like that. And right. now it's just like you see a person's assets and you're like, oh, I can take that from him. Yeah. Oh, he can do. Oh, I can take that from him. Yeah. Oh, he wants to do. Oh, I bet you any kind of money he gonna get that one off. You know what I'm saying? It's like now you you look at it, you know, and you're already making the comparisons between. Your, how you can beat him, you know, how you can beat him. And it's not just, oh, I'm better than him. It's just like, okay, he's not good at this, so I can do that to him. Right. Or if he comes at me like this, then I can just do this, bro. But it's, it's just levels there's levels to this game, man. It is an art, you know. It's not, it's not as simple as just math, one plus one equals two. But, I mean, you can look at two different fires and know this guy is on a different level. Mm -hmm. The other guy, he really don't stand a chance. And if he wins – Wow, that's going to be like a miraculous thing. Yeah. And that's how I feel like, you know, a lot of the fi our fights are going to be. I I'm I'm starting to truly realize that when you're at a high level, most guys you fight are not going to be a challenge. Mm -mm. Look at how Khabib did everyone. Look yeah. at how Connor did everyone. John Jones, Anderson Silva. They do people like that because they're on that high level. All the other guys are just mediocre. And then there's a sprinkle, the, the other, the real competitors are sprinkled in here and there. There's not that many that are really at the high level. You got a lot of guys that make it to the top just by winging punches, yep. getting lucky, yep. capitalizing on the other person's mistakes, and not truly being that well-rounded yep. or that precise with their techniques. So, you know, I feel like we're truly reaching that point, mm -hmm. you know, where, I mean, look at that little IKF term I just did. This is like... Although those guys are rookies, it's just like you see what happens when you put me against a rookie mm -hmm. or even someone that's experienced, but they're not that good. Yeah. They're getting slept. Like, yeah. they're getting slept. And I it's mean, taking it's taking years and years for me to get to this point. I wasn't born like this. Yeah. You know, I, I was built like this. Mm -hmm. You know, simple as that. 
you know, we've been, I've been bred a certain way and I'm five years in now or about four years. We'll say that four years. We won't count all the rest. Oh, well, I mean, mm-hmm. nope, nope, nope. Le- under the system there. we're in now. Yeah. I'll just say years. that about five. So, yeah. you know, um, that's crazy. Well, let me think. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. August would be five years. Five years. Yep. Yeah. So crazy. now I'm, now I'm in the, I just got off the bus. It was a long journey and I just got off the bus at knockout exit in <laughs> KO town. Look at you. You know what I'm saying? You're like ready. you ready. Like I like the energy. I like it, bro. I just, it's like, it's literally just like, it's like, I, there's not really much to even say anymore. <laughs> it's just like, I, I literally just feel like it's, it's a bunch of easy fights coming up for me. There's going to be a few guys, you know, that are going to be stiff competition. But I feel like 90% of the guys that I'm going to fight from here on out till I'm 35 to 40 and I retire is going to be a bunch of easy fights. It's going to be easy knockouts. They're going to be tough. They're going to be brawler, brawling, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to be precise, and I'm just going to find that hole and just slide my fist through it. Yeah. That did not sound right, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you be saying some stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to find the opening and just plant my foot there, you know, yeah. plant my shin there, plant my elbow there. Like, I I don't know, dude. My confidence is just is just ridiculous. Yeah. It's just ridiculous how confident I am. I like uh, what uh, John said one time, John Kim. He said, uh, they said, uh, what do you know about your uh, opponent? He said, uh, all I know is he's about to get knocked out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's how I feel, bro. Like, I don't. I don't like talking like that, bro. But you better know, like, if I if, if there's a finish, I do there, like talking like that. You want to know why? Why? Because I speaks fox. Speaks, I speaks truth. He speaks fox. I speaks. I speaks fox, 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 and truth, truth, truth. Okay. You know, if you put me on the stand and I have to raise my right hand, I have to say about the knockouts. You know, the potential of the knockout, you know, the potential of the strangulation, the manipulation, and the ring control, the ring generalship, and uh, the showmanship, and just everything that I bring to the table. Look at you. You know? He said, I know my word. What, what can I say is it's, it's too easy now. Okay. When you're when you're a bread in Scotland. <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> he got a million different accents. When you have Scottish blood and Scotland ancestry. It's too easy. You've been watching it's too way much too, Netflix. It's way too easy to get in there. And when you are truly a Nigerian nightmare, not like Kunamu or Usman, but I respect him. But real Nigerian night, nightmare. You English next? I watched I watched Freddy Krueger last night, mate. And let me tell you, you the man Australian. reminded me just of myself. <laughs> like, he reminded me of myself as I look into the mirror. That's the same guy. Yeah. How do you slash and how he slash and slash? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here, man, he's going to have me laughing this whole time. But yeah, bro, I don't know, man. I wish I could brag like that. You know, I just, man, most of my life, bro, this is how I talked. You know, this is how I told people how I felt. I always use this. <laughs> yeah, bro, I've never been a talker like that, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm, I mean, public speaking, stuff like that, bro. I've gotten better at this stuff as I've gotten older, bro. But it's never really been what I cared about, bro. I just kind of... Yeah, that's just that's different different people, you know, yeah. different... I love fighting. Yeah. I just love fighting. I love bro. fighting, but I love talking, too, yeah. you know. Especially when you when you can back it up, you know. Yeah. If you can't back it up, then you don't need to be just talking like that because you're going to make yourself look silly. You're right. Like, people think when they hear me talk, like, dang, what if this guy loses? Like, even if I lose a fight... That's not going to shake my confidence or how I feel in myself because one fight does not even define who you are as yeah. a martial artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have 20 knockouts and then get knocked out one time. Mm-hmm. And if that was your last fight, that's what everyone's going to be talking about. Yep. You know, people are just got this, uh, it's like they got amnesia or something. They can't remember all your other fights. You know, they remember your last fight or whatever. But all yeah, that matters I just, is today and tomorrow. You let them tell it. It's yeah. as simple as that yeah. right now, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, bro, my confidence is just, it com- like I said, it comes from my techniques. Mm-hmm. It comes from me being able to show what I can do 
I wasn't like this when we when we first started training together. I no. didn't talk like this. No. You know what I'm saying? I was a lot more just funny. Yeah. Just funny. funny. Yeah. It it didn't have much to do with martial arts, you know. Right. Yeah, so Yeah, that's growth though, bro. It really is, man. For real. Yeah. But yeah, MMA, bro. I can't wait to get back to it, you know. It's going to be fun. Yeah. By the end of this year, get a couple MMA fights hopefully. I don't know. Well, Jen, he's the mastermind. I don't really know what's going through his head. But at the end of the day, what I know is I have to go out there and show I can knock people out, make it clean, make it smooth mm-hmm. and effortless. And that's what's going to, you know, get me closer to the next fight, closer to the MMA, closer to the, you know, professional yeah. fighting. And, you know, I, I trust I trust that he knows, you know, what what to see. Yeah. Like you told me, he said, let's just get the sword a little bit sharper. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. So just sharpening and, you know, May the 7th, get to go out there and show, you know, 16 days away. I know it's going to be like that. We said, that's the, you know, we sitting there talking about it, talking, but it's going to be all of a sudden waking up and it's fight night. Yep. And I'm in the cage. And the whole day I'm going to be like, man, I remember where I was saying in that podcast, this is going to be so funny and so fun just to go out there and prove it. Yeah. There's nothing, like Conor McGregor said, bro, he said, there's no better feeling in the world than that. Saying what you're going to do and going out there and doing it. Yeah. Like, there's no better feeling than that. I, I'll say this then. I mean, just to be perfectly honest, I'm going to finish this guy. That's How? what I expect. I don't know. But I'm going to finish this guy. Period. So what round would you ready. like to finish him? <laughs> um, what round? <coughs> First. <coughs> what were we taught when it comes to MMA? Hey. <laughs> Don't play. Get in there and finish. Get clean, bro. Yeah. Because you you've got how many fights now? You're past the point of where you're fighting for experience. Mm-hmm. Now you're fighting to knock people out and win money. Yeah. So it's like. You can get it done in the first round. That's when it's going to be done. Finish him. Finish him. I mean, you got five minutes, so there's no reason you yeah, can't you finish. Could. Like, yeah, no reason you can't finish in that first five minutes. But you don't look for it. You just let it come, you yeah. know. When we just let it come, like, last time I fought on Cape, I was not looking for the knockout. Mm-hmm. Not at all. I was I was focusing on on my movement, my breathing, and staying staying crispy. And then it just came. I seen his hand down like this. I said, "Oh, I said, oh, there it is." Mm-hmm. I literally, I'm like, "There it is." Yeah. I faint. He don't really react. I said, "Okay, so it's there." Yeah. Let me throw another faint, something else, distract him. Mm-hmm. Pepper the jab twice, and then threw the head kick and just sat him down. Yeah. And it's beautiful how it just worked like that. Like, and how I really, I really seen it, and then I aimed and fired and put him down. And then once he got back up, there was no let me see what's there. I just fell from there. And yeah, it's just, man. <laughs> growth, man. Love it. That's growth, bro. Like it's bro, it just feels like, man, it's just it just feels so great to get in there and be able to do that. Yeah. Like I've wanted this since I was like five, bro. Yeah. Five to seven years old watching I started off watching WWE. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what real. I, you know, I wanted to fight ever since I watched that. But then as I got like seven to nine and, and ten, that's when I started to uh, watch Jackie Chan, Ninja Turtles, Bruce Lee. And that's all I wanted to do. Like, I, wanna, I wanted to be able to, hmm, boom, boom, pop, 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 boom, pop, boom, boom, like just yeah. block, strike. Like, he throw a punch, I move. Like a little face and then pop them. Like, yeah. it's just the art form that, that we chose, you know. Mm-hmm. It's what we were really drawn to. Yep. You know, it's – and I know I have a creative mind, too, and I was born an artist because, you know, I love drawing, and I always love drawing, and I always love being creative, you know. Yep. Creative with my words, creative with my movement, my style. You know, I'm just – I'm not like a lot of these other guys that are just super, you know, doofuses. It's crazy because I was talking about, you know, uh, picking them apart, sitting them down. Bro, I've always been good with my hands. I love to take, like this table. Yeah. I'll take it apart and put it back together. That's Do it me. from scratch. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, whatever it takes. So, like, that's me. I'm Saw just, it, like, sand it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Screw it back together. Let's make it happen, bro. But yeah, so, man, I don't know. I'm excited, bro. I really am. I know it might seem, you know, all night. We're going to have to change your name to the, the Gavin, the hands man. They're <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> like, the hands man, what that mean? You go there. Yeah. I know. I talked to my uncle, bro, and he was just, um, you know, kind of critiquing me. You know, my uncle gave me my black belt, you know, two years ago. And um, he's always been a, a big uh, a big part of my career. And, uh, you know, him just reminded me, like, hey, man, this is MMA. Keep mixing it up. You know, keep mixing it up. And, you know, my coaches are all on the same page, you know. So, yeah, bro, I just feel like, like I said, man, I'm still growing, bro. I sh- I'm still growing. And I, I enjoy that I had that thought process about it. Like, my next fight is not my next fight. I'm not, I'm not worried about my next fight. I'm worried about me right here right now right you know and and everything else that's happening in my life when that time comes bro that time's gonna come there's no anxiety there's no um tension about it bro it's just like like you said yesterday but before you know it'll be here yeah just like you just said a second ago before i know it'll be here bro well i I said yesterday i said i said uh i said when's your fight you said four and a half weeks i said four and a half weeks you might as well not even talk about it yet yeah like you know what i'm saying but at the same time it's gonna be like I mean, but that's that's what's come come uh, with this journey for us, bro. Is that you know we we're always on a schedule, you yeah. know. So we're we're waiting for that next mission, you know. Right. It's just like you know we're we're a trained army just waiting on you know that right. call, like hey, time to go to war, let's go, you know. And and it's not, and we're not counting down the days like we're getting ready. We are ready. We're counting down the days like a kid with the dang Christmas calendar. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, let me get ready. We're past that point. We are ready. Yep. We're just sharpening. We're just sitting there sharpening the blade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just waiting until the day we go in and chop down the tree with it, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah. Look it's, man. It's man, I'm hungry, bro. You hungry? To, I'm starving like Marvin. All right, guys. <laughs> we getting out of here. Uh you know what I'm saying? Uh, thanks for watching. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? How I be saying what I'm saying? And I said it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thanks for watching another episode of the Powerful Fitness Podcast where we talk about everything that's powerful, like these hands and these feet. Um, <laughs> I'm fighting May the 7th uh, in Iowa for a belt. So check that out. Look me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, all that good stuff. TikTok, follow my, um, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, subscribe, share this. You know, I heard this little, uh, this little meme or, or this little, um, this thing that everyone's doing this video on. It says, uh, so wh- why you're not famous yet? And he said, uh, because you haven't shared my posts. So share this, you know what I'm saying? And, um, Gavin Bland's fighting on May the 21st yes, sir. in Springfield, Professional fight, money on the line. You know what I'm saying? We, hey, we got a prize fighter right here. You're a prize fighter now. I mean, I'm just, I'm just fighting just to be fighting. I guess. I gotta get that check, bro. Gotta, gotta get that kids. check. So, um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, deuces, best in the Midwest. All right, let's uh.